you ever just been having a really, really good day? Things are going great at work. Things are going great in your personal life. Yeah, everything's just working out that day. So you're feeling good. You're feeling great. Then you get some really, really good, exciting type of news. You're like, oh, man, this is nice. So that made your day even better. But then you got one person that comes along, and they end up being what we call a vibe killer. They kill the vibe completely. That's exactly what Josina Anderson did yesterday. And it was to no fault of her own. She is a national reporter, and we love and respect Josina Anderson. So we're not taking a shot at her. It's just a little joke. But her report, it, it ended up killing our vibe yesterday. Cause I really like, what the fool? What? Edgar Allan Poe, but Devontae Adams, multiple. Let's just read what she had to say. She said, so first, let me take you back yesterday. Let's rewind for a bit. Yesterday, Devontae Adams, and, and y'all know how this week started. This week started, and I told Team Keep It Clean from Jump, like, look, Devontae Adams, Raiders trying to trade him, but Baltimore Ravens, yeah, this ain't one of their type of moves. This is not something that they would do. He would cost a good amount of money, and, you know, like, it's not very Raven-like at all. So then it came out that the Baltimore Ravens, they were actually on a list of teams that either inquired about Devontae Adams or that he was interested in. So I'm like, oh, how are we getting hope now? Then Sarah Ellison, she brought up that interview that he did back on January 20th before the Ravens took on the Texans where he was like, oh, I would rather take Lamar Jackson and eight, eight, 900 yards and 10 touchdowns than a chance to play for the Super Bowl versus going to a team where I get like 15, 1,600 yards. So I'm like, man, even more hope, really? And then yesterday... Yesterday was the worst. Well, in some cases, the best, whatever you want to call it. But yesterday, Devontae Adams took to Instagram and just posted a picture of Edgar Allan Poe. And we know how connected he is to Baltimore, to the Baltimore Ravens. We already know the drill. And then he went and put a quote from Edgar Allan Poe. It's like, really, Devontae? Are you, come on now. Ain't no other one of these 31 other teams got nothing to do with no Edgar Allan Poe. You know what you're doing to us. You know what you're doing to us. But Jacina Anderson, let's listen to what she said. She said, I'm told there's nothing going on. Nothing going on. And she put that in quotes. So she said, literally somebody told her there's nothing going on uh, with the Baltimore Ravens and the Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams at this time. Per source, yesterday I was told there was nothing to report on this front. While the trade market is generally fluid, that's the tone right now. And I said, really? Really? Now, I know a lot of people saw that and they were like, that's it. Hey, we knew this was on the way. We knew this was coming. This is why I didn't want to get my hopes up. That's why I wasn't tripping. That's why I wasn't getting hyped off of Devontae Adams. Nothing. And I, I get it. I still love and respect y'all and respect y'all that are on that side to where you like, look, I'm not even getting hyped. I'm not getting excited. I'm not getting none of that. I get it. You, you want to control your emotions because you don't want to be let down. You don't want to be hurt again. I get it. I don't want to be hurt either, but I'm willing to put my emotions out there and see what happens with this Devontae Adams thing or what doesn't end up happening. Now, with her saying there's nothing going on, that ain't do nothing to me. It really didn't because there was no expectation that something was going to get done yesterday or especially today and then obviously on Sunday. No, nothing's going to happen on no Friday right before the game. No, uh-uh. But early in the week, on a Monday, on a Tuesday, possibly even a Wednesday, this, whenever this does happen for whatever team he ends up being dealt to, it's going to happen early in the week rather than later. So I wasn't tripping off of her report. Reason being because things can change like that immediately. We've seen it too many times to, to, to be tripping off of that. Like, oh, her saying that nothing's going on right now. I'm sure that could be the case. She could be right. Or they could be just keeping stuff way under wraps. You know how the Baltimore Ravens do. You know how they do. They keep stuff real close. I'm not saying that they are, but I'm also not saying that they're not. We just, we don't know. But according to Justina, nothing's happening right now. But just because something's not happening right now, it doesn't mean that nothing ever will. Now, uh, my guy Theo, he made a really good point yesterday. He said, man, he said, this is looking like the same old story where a player, they use the Baltimore Ravens to sort of give themselves a nice little boost, nice little push. Because we've seen it before when players will, Ravens' names will be brought up in a report. A uh, player will say they're talking to the Ravens. They've engaged in discussions with the Ravens, whether it may be on contract, whether it may be for trade, whatever. And the Ravens, like, really, they're not even one of the front runners. But that can really put pressure on teams 
to be like, oh, no, 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 we, we want them instead of the Ravens. We're we willing to give more or whatnot. That can help. And we, cause we, it's, it's a game. It's a business. Now, we hope that Devontae Adams is not using the Baltimore Ravens for business, but let's just see. Now, one last thing. Um, Chris Broussard, uh, on the, I think it's Nick Wright's show. I know a lot of Ravens fans don't want to hear nothing from Nick Wright. But on the show with Nick Wright, with Chris Broussard, I forgot who else is on there, but they were having a conversation about this. And Chris Broussard said, it just makes sense. He said, Ravens, do it. It needs to be done. But I love what he said, what he talked about. He, he brought up how John Harbaugh a couple of weeks ago, he said, hey, we ain't bringing Derrick Henry to get 25 to 30 carries a game. But you see how they've been using Derrick Henry. He was like, he, he said they should say, they should get Devontae Adams, and they should say, we ain't bringing Devontae Adams to get 8 to 10 catches per game. But what he talked about, he said, look, if the Ravens get Devontae Adams, they can still and should still stick to their bread and butter. But he would give, it was all the same stuff that we've been saying too. It's all the same stuff. But he was talking about how Devontae Adams would give them, it would give Lamar Jackson the best receiver that he has ever had. Let's see what gets done or what doesn't. Now we started off with not the best news in the world, but certainly not the worst. So I guess we got to continue on that trend. Arthur Millett, um, who started practicing this week, it appears he had a bit of a setback. Uh, Jess Rebick said, Harbaugh said that Arthur Millett had a soft tissue setback. He won't play on Sunday. Harbaugh said he'll be day-to-day -day going forward. Now, soft tissue. That is infamous with the Baltimore Ravens uh, and infamous with John Harbaugh as far as describing someone's injury. Soft tissue could be a day. A soft tissue could be months. But in this case with Arthur Millette, um, I, I don't expect it to be anything long-term. I don't expect it to be anything serious. Um, but we'll, we'll just wait and see. But uh, I, he ain't playing this week against the Bengals. It would have been nice to get him in the rotation. But fear not because the Baltimore Ravens, like we've spoken about recently, they have a really nice set of defensive backs. Like, again, Marlon Humphrey, who's been playing outstanding this year. Uh, Brandon Stevens, he, he, he's been solid. He's been up and down, of course. And it's the cornerback position. It's tough. Uh, or Darius Washington when he's on the field. Yeah. Nate Wiggins. Oh, yeah, we expect to see a lot of him tomorrow, too. So Ravens are still in good position when it comes to their cornerbacks. But getting Arthur awesome Millette would have made it that much sweeter going against Cincinnati. But they should still be in good hands. Tomorrow's game against Cincinnati is historic because Lamar Jackson, what is he, 8-1 versus the Bengals? Some crazy record like that. But not only that, but Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is very, very close to hitting a sensational milestone that – Probably should be talked about more. Let's read this report from Jameson Henson. He said, Ravens, Derrick, Raven, Ravens running back Derrick Henry on being 18 yards from reaching 10,000 career rushing yards. That's a lot of running. And for him to still be running the way that he's running for the Baltimore Ravens right now, after running for about 9,000 something yards prior to that, he's a real deal, man. Straight up. Derrick Henry. <laughs> I mean, we already knew he was a real deal. We already knew he was a Hall of Famer, but yeah, he, he's giving us a reminder why. But we're glad that he's on our side now anyway it says uh he said i've been blessed tremendously and very thankful to be able to reach a milestone that big and all the great ones before me that i idolized who reached that accomplishment that's a huge accomplishment now something I, I saw somebody say something on twitter um when this uh presser came out when it was talked about uh derrick henry getting ready to, getting ready to hit ten thousand yards somebody said derrick henry might actually be the last running back to hit ten thousand yards and when i saw that i said oh wow that um that's something right there because you know teams they don't run the ball like they used to and, and a lot of teams don't have that one feature back like they used to and even if they do that one feature back he could stay on the team that you could have him for the first four or five years and then a lot of teams they'll move on they'll be like oh well thanks but no thanks anymore but even if they sign them to a second contract a lot of times it's not the same it's not the same they look at you like Damaged goods, they look at you like you're using abuse or something like that, and they're they willing to move on quicker than ever nowadays. So for Derrick Henry to be able to make it to, to getting ready to make it to 10,000 yards, that's amazing, man. That, 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 that is an amazing feat. So shout out to the king. Here we are, my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. Let's hear a question from our guy, Michael. He said, what's good? What's good, Mike? He said, I don't think we should get so excited just yet about Devontae Adams coming to the Ravens. He said, after doing a little research, I discovered that Edgar Allan Poe moved to New York when he was 35 years old. 
This could very well mean the Jets are the team he is planning to join. I believe nothing you hear in half of what you see. Hopefully I'm wrong and he does find his way to Baltimore, but you and the family stay blessed. Mike, I ain't want to hear all that. I, I, I ain't want to hear none of that. I don't care about none of that. Well, I, I do, but I, I, I appreciate it. I, I like that you, you, you went and did that research about Edgar Allan Poe and whatnot. And that, that could be the case. Now, we know, like, if he goes to New York, we won't be surprised. That's obviously his very first choice. It's Aaron Rodgers. That's his guy. That's the first choice. And he came out and said, like, hey, those are the two teams that he want to play for. Either the Jets or the Saints. So, and we know the Jets, like, a, a couple of people made some really, really good points about the Jets. Like, the Jets, they more, more than willing to go all in. Why? Because the GM may be on a hot seat. The coach may be on a hot seat. A lot of them may be on a hot seat. So they may be, like, not even planning for the future, but planning for this year and this year only and be like, look, let's go get Devontae. Whatever it takes. We, we trying to keep our jobs this year and then, of course, beyond that, too. So the Jets are definitely going to be a lot more willing, especially with Aaron Rodgers. Like, Aaron Rodgers, that's, that's the guy over there. They, like, they're going to try to honor his wishes as much as they possibly can. Like, you remember when they, when they let him skip camp and all that so he can go sit in the dark and do all whatever he's doing? They, like, Aaron Rodgers, he's running the show over there. So if Aaron Rodgers wants Devontae Adams... More than likely, Aaron Rodgers is going to get Devontae Adams, but I wouldn't be mad if the Baltimore Ravens hit the Jets with a little uppercut and then sneak and steal him away. Team, keep it clean. My apologies because while I was editing the video, and of course she was helping me edit it, but I forgot to mention that tomorrow, Yannick Ngakwe, he is making his Baltimore Ravens will re-debut since he debuted for the Ravens like a couple years ago. Didn't go so good, but now he's here for the second time around. But anyway... Yannick Ngakwe, the Baltimore Ravens used one of their three call-ups, their three practice squad call-ups on Yannick Ngakwe, so he will be making his 2024 Ravens debut. So not his overall Baltimore Ravens, but his 2024 Baltimore Ravens debut. The pass rush, in my opinion, has been great this season. It's been amazing, and, and as a Ravens fan, to say that, like, consistently, that, that's a beautiful thing to say. Like, yeah, okay, let's go, baby. But... He adds just another piece, another experienced guy, a proven guy, somebody that you know knows what it takes to get to the quarterback. So adding him into the mix, adding him into the rotation, that should help keep the Baltimore Ravens edge guys that much more fresher. But you still don't want to force it. You don't want to get them out of rhythm just to try to get somebody else in rhythm or just to keep guys fresh. You want to do this thing the right way. So far, in my opinion, they have been doing a pass rush pretty good. They have been deploying their pass rushers pretty good. So... Zo, Zo, Zach, Zach Orr, keep doing your thing. But adding Yannick into the mix, that makes them that much more talented, gives them that much more quality depth, and makes their pass rush that much better. So look out for it tomorrow.